Well, if you've been following the channel, you'll know that I kind of have a penchant for picking up home theater equipment. And uh, about a month ago, I picked up a new addition to my home theater collection, as it were. And that is the ViewSonic PX800 HD. It's an ultra short throw projector, meaning it's one of those projectors that you don't need uh, to mount in the back of the room. It's not a short throw that you typically have to put on, on a coffee table. This is a projector that sits really right up against your wall and pro projects an image anywhere from about 100 inches to 130 inches. So this is something that I was interested in and tried to find some videos online about it, demoing it, and I couldn't really find anything. In fact, it was very hard to find any reviews of any kind, save for a very good write-up in uh, Projector Central. So what I figured I'd do is I'd come on, I'd give you my thoughts and assessment of this projector, demo some material to the extent that that's useful on YouTube. I mean, you're not getting the exact uh, in-home video quality, but you'll get an idea of how it performs with different kinds of content. And then I'll give you a summary review towards the end of the video, and I will link to that timestamp. So if you just want to skip all of the demoing stuff, you can go right to that and hear my thoughts. All right, so here's the unit. This is the, uh, again, the ViewSonic PX800 HD. You can see it is uh, not the best looking piece of electronics, and the kind of gray and white looks a bit uh, old school, but uh, certainly does the job. And you can see here this is a uh, projection area. I guess there's a sort of a bulb and then a, a mirror, and then it projects uh, the image upward. And of course, I have a ton of wires, but it's a pretty clean hookup, you know, nothing out of the ordinary. And let's see here if we go up. Uh, I had to pick up a screen, so we pull back here, and that's the basic setup. I'll go over why uh, I did that in a little bit. And, you know, again, Wire management, not my strong points. I'll get to that. And then I still have the OLED TV here over the fireplace. And I, I, I did that because as, as nice as the projector is, um, in the daytime if you want to watch something you can't really use the projector. So um, let's go over some of the limitations. I mean obviously it does what it sets out to do it projects a nice, you know, what I would call projector style image with, you know, just plugging it in and, and a couple of uh, AV connections. You know, you don't have to mount it, so it's very convenient. But it's going to depend, your success with this is going to depend on the room. And I want to point out some limitations of the room. First and foremost, you know, this is in a loft and, you know, 80s style US uh, architecture here. You've got uh, the two skylights, which again limits daytime performance. Uh, the other thing you want to be aware of is, you know, this black unit here that I picked up from uh, Best Buy about 10 years ago. You know, this top to bottom here is, a, I would say, just under two feet. And that's about as high as you want to go. Um, if you notice that the top end here of the screen that focuses in. Now I've got about maybe an inch and a half, inch and three quarters of clearance from the top of the image to the ceiling. So if you have a standard credenza or sort of a nice piece of furniture on which you would rest a 65 inch television, it may be too high. So you definitely want to bring this down towards the ground. Um, and even then, positioning is going to be a bit of an issue and one of the reasons if we can look down here is you have these feet and these feet are very cheap uh, they're adjustable but even you can see you know it's not quite perfectly uh, flush with the surface and underneath there's that other arm there I don't know if you can see that but you know that's not adjustable so basically you're just dealing with these two very, very cheap, very flimsy, uh, adjustable feet. And yes, they do the job. I mean, this hasn't moved at all. 
uh, since I've gotten it to where it needs to be. But, you know, it took a lot of adjustment to get it where it is. Uh, and even then, you want to measure uh, pretty accurately because <clears throat> with the screen here, you know, the image bleeds down to right where my finger is. You can't really see it when you're watching, but it's not a perfect, uh, you know, frame. So, again, that has to do with, uh, with the height and the adjustment. In this case, I probably need about a half inch taller base to get it, you know, perfectly in the screen. But I don't know where I'm going to find something that will just raise it up a half inch. And if, again, if I'm playing with the legs, um, it doesn't look any better. So I, I, I really have it right where I need to have it. Why don't I get the screen? Well, if you read online, it will talk about how if you're projecting it against a wall, it's going to bring out every imperfection in the wall. Now this wall, uh, I prepped and sanded it down and patched holes, and I thought I got a pretty clean wall. But, you know, when they say that, they are not only talking about little specks of paint that might be jutting out of the wall, but this part of the wall has a little divot in it. You can't see it, but when the image was projected against the wall, which looked pretty good, to be honest with you, um, when it panned, this whole bottom part of the image kind of looked like a water ripple. So, unless your wall is absolutely perfect, you are going to have some issues with it. So, I had to go with this uh, silver ticket gray screen. And to me, it looks white, but I guess their white is super white, and this is more of a, a gray to help the black levels. Uh, honestly, you know, while it looks okay, um, it, it didn't look bad against uh, this beige, you know, dark cream wall. I know in the picture here it looks a bit, a bit pink, but, you know, that didn't look too bad. And if it was just a little bit more forgiving with uh, the wall surface, I probably wouldn't have gotten the screen. But just know that if you don't have a perfect wall, you know, you probably are going to have to invest in a screen. Now you can get all, there is a screen that, pairs with this, but it's more expensive than the projector, so, you know, you probably will have to get some kind of screen, and again, uh, you know, daylight performance, ambient light performance is okay, um, but if you really want to watch something during the day, you're going to have to go with another display in the room, I think. So that's kind of the basic overview. All right, so I just want to show you some other problems here. Um, you can see in the ceiling that there's that slight reflection, and you know, this is, again, specific to this room. Um, that reflection is because the people who had this place before me decided, for whatever reason, to replace the normal smooth ceilings with a sparkly popcorn ceiling. That was a, uh, a choice. Uh, usually popcorn ceilings are kind of builder grade. But it creates this reflection, and uh, again, you probably can't see it on camera, but there are these little sort of sparkling elements. Um, so those are probably reflecting some light back onto the screen. Uh, in addition, we have this door uh, off to the side of the room, and not sure how that's coming through, but you know that door is a has a kind of a high gloss paint. And, you know, I think that is also reflecting some light back onto the screen. I mean, everyone's room is different. So you're going to have different elements um, affecting it. Plus, uh, this is a problem that I've noticed in a number of projectors, and I'm not really sure if it's, you know, the room or what. But if we click on the pattern here, and again, I don't know how much this is going to come through. You know, we have some focus focus on this corner is pretty good um, up top good but as we come around to oh, I almost knock over the speaker to the uh, right hand side upper right hand side that is not as sharply focused you know again you're not you may not see that on YouTube but there is always one side that just is a little bit fuzzier. And like I said, I've had that with a couple of projectors that I've tested out. 
Um, and again, I'm not sure if it's, again, the wall not being straight, but it's an issue, and you can't really see it while you're watching TV, necessarily. Uh, but you can kind of see it, you know, if you've got the computer screen going. Not enough to return it, but just something I figured I'd point out. All right, so let's uh, look at some content here. This is a little sample of a sporting event. And I'm going to apologize for the fact that the picture is kind of off here, or that it's slightly rotated, but uh, I do not have a good tripod. So uh, that is unfortunately the result, but I mean, I think you'll, you'll see, uh, you know, the quality of the image here, you know, baseball, this is on ESPN. By the way, if you see a flicker, that's not the projector, that is, for whatever reason, ESPN flickers now. I don't know why, but... You know, good, solid color. Uh, I think here on YouTube, you're getting a little more pop than you would get in the room. But I think this is a fair representation of what you'll see when viewing a sporting event. So here's an example of Star Wars. This is uh, the third of the old ones. And the reason why I'm showing you this, I, I don't know how this is coming across on YouTube, but it does have decent black levels. Uh, the screen supposedly highlights, uh, or not highlights, but uh, produces deep blacks over a white screen. And I think in these scenes, at least certainly viewing it in the room, I was impressed with the quality of the black level performance. And again, I've never seen Star Wars on the big screen, so this was definitely uh, a bonus for me. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fast forward a little bit and I will show you what happens when I flick on and off the lights in cinema mode. So it can kind of give you an idea of the ambient light differences. Now I should point out that what you're seeing here is extreme. I think when you have like a sporting event or a game on and you have some ambient light it's not a stark reduction in image quality as what you're seeing here but uh, nonetheless Obviously, you want to shut the lights off when you're watching a movie. All right, let's give you some uh, gaming performance here. A little uh, retro stuff. This is uh, Sonic the Hedgehog. And I will say that it is uh, initially very impressive, you know, to, to play a classic game like this on a 100-inch screen. I mean, this is something that, you know, as a kid, you would only dream of doing. And, I mean, take, for example... Super Mario World, playing it, say, for me it was like in a Bradley's on that little 16 or 19 inch screen and it looked amazing. So when you can, can get these games up and running on a projector, and again, have pretty good input lag. I mean, you know, they have a, a game mode, and I toggled that on and off here. I didn't really see a difference. Nonetheless, I'm not a you know competitive gamer. I'm sure if you're a sort of a fighting game person or something like that, uh, you might notice it. But as far as you know, everyday gaming, I have not noticed any input lag whatsoever. And just to give you a little look at what modern gaming is like, playing some Halo Five on the original Xbox or well, whatever you want to call it, the original launch Xbox One. And I will say that, you know, for first-person shooters, third-person action games, there is an immersive quality to playing it on a big screen. I mean, as you're sort of, you can stand up in the room and feel like you are in that world. So uh, I, I would say that, you know, again, very impressive. And I said it was initially impressive because... To be honest with you, the colors, and, and I think YouTube, or at least uh, the editing software that I'm in, is giving you a richness to the colors and, and a pop that you don't really see when you're using. It's not to say that the colors are bad. It's not to say that there aren't good highlights uh, when you're playing a game. But I would say that after a while, you notice that the image is just not bright enough compared to, say, a 4K, you know, playing Halo 5 on a, on a 4K TV. Uh, or even on the LED, for that matter, or the OLED, which has that uh, ambient light, or, you know, that adjustable light thing where if it gets too bright, it just dims down the picture. They call it ABL, uh, Automatic brightness, uh, brightness Limitation. Anyway, um, 
even with that, you know, it is still significantly bolder and better on my OLED TV. So you'll get some fun out of it. I mean, definitely if you have people over and you just want to hook up a video game system and, and have some, you know, awesome couch co-op, it's great. But long term, it, this is not something that I would want to game on every day. And next up, I just thought I'd do a comparison. This is a, uh, I think, a video of Norway or Iceland. Uh, it was floating around Vimeo. And on the left, you have the projector. On the right, you have the LG OLED television, both at 1080p. And I thought it was just interesting to see kind of the differences uh, between the two images. Obviously, this is on YouTube. Video quality is what it is. But what I think you can see on the right, uh, the OLED image deeper blacks, more vivid colors. The projector, though, I think is keeping uh, pretty steady. I mean, obviously it's struggling with the blacks, but I think it, it's producing a more natural image, which I think a good projector will do. It won't uh, blow up the colors. It'll just keep, um, you know, a strong, colorful palette, but everything within a, a natural range. And, of course, on the left, uh, you know, it is on... Uh, movie mode on the projector. Same thing on the OLED television, but as you can see, deeper blacks, more vivid colors. It's ultimately a preference. I think they're two different images. They're doing the same thing, obviously, with different technologies and in different ways. But I'm not, I, I wouldn't say the projector is losing out too much versus what I think we all consider today to be the optimal television technology. All right, so I'm going to do a quick summary of the pros and cons and then give you my final verdict. Uh, some of the pros. The projector experience that this provides is great in rooms with limited placement options. It's doing what it said that it would do on the box, and that is give you that home theater-like experience without worrying about mounting, without really having a purpose-built room for it. So I think... You know, hats off to, to ViewSonic. They accomplish that with this projector. Uh, number two, it, you know, it does have good colors, as I, I think we saw in that OLED comparison. While certainly not up to the level of an OLED, uh, it is respectable. And I think, uh, you know, hopefully all of the sampling that I've provided in this video shows you that, yeah, I mean, it's not uh, the most vibrant uh, color palette you're going to see, but it's certainly very good. Uh, number three, it does have a uniform image. I was reading that a lot of the less expensive ultra-short throw projectors, the ones that are, you know, about $1,000 or less, and there are only a couple, I think uh, one was Optoma, uh, perhaps had one or two in that price range. They had... Uh, image uniformity issues, there would be blotches or hot spots, and I, I do have to say, looking at the screen and, in fact, the wall, from all angles, the ViewSonic gave you a very uniform image. Uh, number four, uh, it has low input lag. Uh, certainly with the gaming mode on, but even with the gaming mode off, I'm not really noticing a ton of input lag, so you can game on it. I think that's a positive. Uh, it has, uh, and this is, I think, an extremely important point, it has a very, very low lamp replacement cost. I believe it's about four, uh, 50 to $60 for a replacement lamp. Compare that with three to $400 on similar projectors. And, of course, if you have you know, one of the top-of-the-line you know, ceiling-mounted projectors, it's going to be even more. So you can get these you know, from Amazon, get them in two days, and not really have to worry about those costs down the road. And I will say it has acceptable performance with moderate ambient light. So my example is, if it's 3 o'clock in the afternoon and I've got light directly above from those skylights, it's not going to look very good. But as that sun sets and the room is still relatively bright, again, I'm not having the lamps on, but just, you know, sunlight in the room, it's decent, it's watchable, uh, but it's, it's not going to replace uh, a television necessarily, but I think at night, too, you have a lamp on, you're watching a game, uh, it's perfectly acceptable ambient light performance. And moving on to the cons. Uh, I think number one has to be mentioned, the image is softer than what you'll get on a television, particularly with streaming content. 
Now, if I flip, if I throw in a Blu-ray, it's fine. It's it's actually looks very good, but. I noticed sort of HBO streaming, YouTube, a lot of the sports channels that are producing a 720p image, uh, it just doesn't look as good as a television. Uh, secondly, uh, it's very difficult and demanding to position the unit to get the best image. Yes, it's very easy to put it in the front of the room, but like I said, getting it to be completely straight, uh, getting it to be sharp, you really, really need... Uh, to fiddle around with it, especially with those cheap positioning legs. Again, if you have a what I would call a regular-sized credenza or something like that, you may have to replace it. It needs to be a little bit lower to the floor than you might think. And I think connected with that, number three, it may necessitate the purchase of a screen. You know, depending on your wall, and I would say that I was working with what I thought was a very smooth, very well-prepped wall. And nonetheless, that little bulge uh, was enough, was distracting enough to make me purchase a screen. And I think that leads into number four. It's expensive. I mean, at, at 1500 MSRP, you can get it for about uh, 12 to 13 through Amazon and other sellers. Plus, you throw in the screen or just wall treatment. I mean, you're looking, you're going to push towards $2,000 pretty easily. Um, and at that point, you're going to consider other options, I think. Number five, it's not quite bright enough for some content. This is something I noticed particularly with sports and video games. While it looks great with movies, with those sources, you're going to run into some situations where it's not going to look dim, but you're always aware that this is not quite as bright and vibrant as you would like. And again, certainly for extended gaming sessions, I think you're going to say, you know what, I would rather have the higher-end television than the projector setup. Um, number six, it's got a loud fan. I, I think you get used to it, at least I've gotten used to it, but it's definitely a drone that you can hear in some quieter film scenes. Uh, again, it's kind of cheap feeling. The zoom lever feels cheap. The feet, positioning feet are cheap, like I said. It's, it's a big hunk of relatively cheap plastic that nonetheless is well designed and does uh, what it needs to do, but for, I think, thirteen, fourteen hundred bucks, you're going to say, oh, wow, this has somewhat of a toy feel to it. And then lastly, substandard documentation. Uh, it does not mention how to replace the light bulb. It doesn't really indicate whether you have the dust screen installed in the unit or not. Actually, you don't. You have the housing for it installed in the unit, but not actually the dust screen itself. That's an extra 50 bucks. It doesn't go into extreme detail as far as the placement uh, or all of the features are concerned. You have to do a bit of tinkering and discovery yourself. So, again, you would think for the price of the unit that the documentation would be a little bit better than it is. So, final verdict for me is that this is impressive technology. It does exactly what it claims to do, but I think... Adding in the cost of a screen, adding in, you know, whether you're going to prep a wall and put up theater paint, and you get this thing moving towards $2,000, most consumers would be better served with a traditional big screen television. And honestly, if you're pushing towards $2,000, now you're in the OLED price range. I, I, I couldn't recommend this over an OLED TV. Um, I would say only consider this projector for maybe a secondary viewing area that won't accommodate a standard projector if you want the home theater experience, but you don't want to build a theater room. You know, you don't have that kind of cash or space or both. This is a decent option. I still hesitate to say that it's more than a toy. I mean, it's well designed. It, like I said, does what it's supposed to do. I don't think it's going, I don't have the impression that it's a low quality item, but at the same time, I think it's something of a curiosity. It's something fun to have, but it shouldn't be your main viewing uh, piece of equipment. You'll, you'll probably want a television somewhere else in the house. So that is what I hope is, uh, you know, is a thorough review of this product. Again, when I was deciding whether to purchase it or not, I didn't see really anything on YouTube uh, discussing this. And again, hopefully, uh, if you're considering it, this has given you some food for thought.